Okay, I have a who the f*** said that for this week. Are you guys ready for it? Fire away. What is better, to be born good or to overcome your evil nature through great effort? Who the f*** said Ooh, that? Good question. Someone talking to Cole McGrath. <laughs> well, uh, not, not a bad suggestion, but not correct. So what is better, to be born good or to overcome your evil nature through great effort? We will find out who the f*** said that at the end of the show. So, let's get going. This is episode 227, and today is Friday, the 24th of August, 2018. Welcome to the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. I am your host, Lucas, and not here with me this week is my co-host and good friend, Snooze. <laughs> However, he did level up this week, so let's all wish him a happy level up day. Happy level up day, dude. Happy plus one, Snooze. Woo! Hey Snoogs, I know you're listening, so make sure you spend all of those skill points wisely. Real life isn't like Fallout 76, you can't just rearrange them later. <laughs> <laughs> Greg will clarify that with more detail, if you wish, at a later date. <laughs> <laughs> just come and talk to me. That's it. Also joining us after a week of rest is the hard-working mother and gamer, Ramutha. How are ya? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm oh, very good, thank you. Did you have a good week away? I did. I had some beach time. It was amazing. Oh, good <laughs> for you. That's lovely. And it goes too quick, does it not? Far, far too quick. Ah, mm. oh, well, back to the grind and back to the podcast. That's it. And last but not least, we have the guy that turns old number plates into penguins that sing Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears. Reggio! Hey, buddy. How, How are, are you? Ya? Um, I'm good. I'm, I think I have some inspiration for a YouTube sensation. Yeah, well, look, you can make it happen, <laughs> my friend. You can make it. If you can make penguins sing out of number plates, I reckon you could become a number one hit sensation on YouTube. I, I reckon. Either mm-hmm. that, or I just waste a hell of a lot of time for a bunch of people not to watch it. Well, maybe, but geez, I've seen some of the YouTube channels that are doing really well, and I scratch my head and go, why has this person got half a million subscribers? <laughs> oh, you, but, you never know, I could be the bait of our generation with that. Possibly. Like, you won't, you won't <laughs> know unless a, you give it a, a go. That's a severe indictment of today's society. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, whether you do well or not in social media or YouTube or whatever these days, it's such a flip of the coin. Yeah. To be fair, I was actually looking at some stuff today on the internet and I was looking at, because I don't watch free-to-air TV anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I was looking at some of the new shows that have popped up on free-to-air TV and right there, that is an indictment of society, if there ever was. There are some terrible concepts that are being allowed to be TV shows now. Yes. It's, It's hectic. Very, very true. But look, I've got to tell you, Free to Air Telly has got some good stuff on there. You've got to watch All Aussie Adventures. Russell Coit is back on Channel 10. I love that show. Yes. yes. As, as much as it's slapstick humor, I, I don't, there's just something about the outback and taking the piss. Like, it's just, yeah, it's great. And going back, I don't know if it was six months, 12 months ago, when I did the review for the G20, the Azus G20. I mm-hmm. did like an homage to uh, Russell oh, Coit. Yes, with, yes, with, I remember. Yeah, with my review video, and I had a really good time with it. And I still like to think that that's the reason Russ, Russell Coit came back because because he saw that I <laughs> I made an homage to him, and he's like, "Well, I've got people like him that are keen the, on my show. I'm coming back." The fans have spoken. I'm coming back. <laughs> Love and kicking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Skrill, Russell Coit for PM. He may well be next week. Who knows? I was going to say at this rate, yeah, he could be. Yeah, because <laughs> we've got um, a new Prime Minister as well. Uh, mm. I, I don't even know who it is yet. Uh, ScoMo. Scott Morrison. Is that his name, Scott Morrison? Scott Morrison. ScoMo. <laughs> he's, the, he's, the, 
Yes, Gomo. That's his nickname. Uh, he, for those that don't know, he was the treasurer up until today. I had no he's idea. Now, he's now the PM. Right. I'm not going to remember that. I've seen... Inter- like- interesting fact. I actually know and is friends with uh, Scott Morrison's brother. Oh, there you go. But yeah, um, you go. I've, I've heard ambulance officers speaking to people that ha- suspect have a, have a, what do you call it, a concussion? And they ask mm-hmm. them questions like, how many fingers am I holding up? Who's the current Prime Minister? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if yeah, I yeah. can answer that without a concussion. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sorry, there was a, a tweet on the feed for um, one of the announcements about it, and uh, someone quite funnily put up a tweet that said, aliens arrive at Earth. Aliens say, take us to your leader. Strains look around nervously and then reply, okay, uh, so the situation is... About that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, that's enough about politics. We can't go down that rabbit yeah, hole. No, this, is, this, is, this is Gamers Express, not Politics Express. That's exactly right. All right, so before we start, here is this week's show in preview. First up, we will do video game discussion, which is quite different to what we've just done in the intro. Then we'll do gaming pre-order. Then what's that sound? Then, Greg, you do it. Quit it. <laughs> yes, and then last words. So let's get into video game discussion. Okay, first little note that I'm going to say just before we do Poll of the Week is the Age podcast, the one that you're listening to right now, is now available on iHeartRadio for your convenience. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, yeah. So uh, th- they accepted our podcast onto their El Primo format. But I was, uh, I, I told my wife about it probably about 10 minutes before we started the show. And I'm like, oh, we're on iHeartRadio. I'll show you. That is the worst app, at least on iOS, it is anyway. <laughs> it is so That's the heaviness. <laughs> it is so slow. <laughs> Thanks for having us, your house is shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's so sluggish and slow. It it takes ages to play and oh the website's really good. So if you're sitting at a computer or whatever and you like iHeartRadio, you know, you like listening to Kiss FM or something like that, and you can switch over to our podcast. It works really good on the website. For me, I, I don't know if it's just me. Uh, I did switch to a couple of other apps to see if it was just my internet connection. It was running fine with everything else. It's just iHeartRadio. I don't know. Maybe they're just having some issues at the moment. Or maybe they're just inundated with people listening to our show on it, maybe. Maybe. But if you are using the app, it's a bit slow, persevere, because we're worth it. Absolutely. Or if that doesn't work, we're also on iTunes, Stitcher, (laughs) TuneIn Radio. I've not had any issues with them. We're also on a whole bunch of other podcast platforms that just take the podcast from all of these other sources and yeah. put it on their own like without yeah, me even I, knowing I listen to it on Podbean well Podbean is that's who actually hosts the show and then uh, all these other things like uh, iHeartRadio and Stitcher, TuneIn Radio they sort of just take the, I think it's a CSS or whatever it is where, yep. where they just take it from Podbean. So Podbean is the actual source. That's where it comes from. All right. Moving on to the poll of the week. All right, so last week we asked the question, do you like the idea of having mid-gen upgraded consoles like the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X, or do you think they're just making us spend more money with little gains? We've got 299 votes. 35% said, yes, I want them, more power, please. And 65% said, no, it's a money grab. Hmm. The the comments comments on on the poll of the week were quite strongly towards, yes, we want this. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yet the voting said otherwise. What do you guys think? Me personally, I don't think it's a money grab. Personally. I, I I don't think it's about a money grab. Um, I think they're just trying to pander to the will of the people. Like you said, there's a lot of people in there that are saying, yes, we want more power, we want these mm. mid-console upgrades, because they do. They want 
they want to have the most powerful thing at their disposal. And it seems like waiting seven or eight years in a cycle now is too long because technology is rapidly moving forward in that time. So I don't think it's about a money grab. I think they're just answering what people want, which is they do. They do want these things. Yeah, it means that as gamers, we now have to spend more money if we want to stay on that cutting edge. But you don't have to. It's tr- it's true. You don't have to. They they did it. If they were going to do it, they did it the right way, where they're, they're not yep. segregating. All games are going to be playable across two uh, the, the two different um, types, the, the, the original and the upgraded. Uh, but the thing is that the the original uh, conflict that I had with it back when these these consoles were announced was the fact that I'm the kind of person that always feels like I like to have the latest and the greatest, and that's just mm-hmm. me. That's a me issue, right? I like yep. I'm a tech guy. I like the best, and mm-hmm. I felt like bringing this out halfway through a generation was forcing me to go and get this new thing. Because nothing frustrates me more than when you say you get your new game and then you find out that this would be better if I had the the new new version of the console. I also feel like it's a it, it it's a cheats way of making games run better on a console. Now, when you look at the last generation where you had you you look at the day one PlayStation 3 game or Xbox 360 game versus <laughs> the last games that came out there's a massive graphical upgrade and the games run and look so much better towards the end of the generation i feel yep. that bringing out these mid gen refresh or upgrades is going to it's going to make them lazy and they're not going to find these ways to take full advantage of the console that I paid hard earned money for on day 1 mm. so to get this graphical upgrade that they pushed for on the same hardware last generation I have to pay extra for a new console rather than them finding fantastic new ways to make the games look and play better that's that's my beef with it. I'm not totally against it. I have a PlayStation 4 Pro and I have an Xbox One X and I love them. They are much better than the originals. But I just feel that now that it's a refresh, you, there's, by the time that we jump to next generation, that 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 the Xbox One X and the Pro, they're not even going to be at their full potential because we're not going to have that five, six years of practice and where they're yep. nailing it, and they're giving me yep. my money's worth. I, yes. I just I feel like it's laziness. Yeah, no, look, I agree with you. And to be fair, I guarantee some of that push for a mid-cycle refresh isn't just from the consumer, but from the devs as well. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. So, you know, it's, it's just they're appeasing two people that are feeding into them because they're the ones asking for it. Like, I don't... As much as... As much as we'd like to say that it's a cash grab, at the end of the day, there's nothing cash grabby about bringing out a new console. Like the difference between the Xbox One versus the Xbox One S, you maybe argue that that might be a cash grab because you knew strategically they thought about this right at the beginning of the the process. Mm. Again, we're going to bring out an X. We're going to bring out an, X, uh, an S. Sorry, I want Xbox One. Then I'm going to bring out an Xbox One S. And essentially, it's just going to be a different hard drive. Slap a bit of coat of paint on it. And obviously, Uncle Mary's your aunt. We've got a mid-cycle refresh kind of thing. And yeah, that's over- oversimplifying it slightly. But there wasn't anything tremendously in the change, like unlike with the X and the Pro, right? They, they, were, they were big hardware changes. Um, so... You know, I look. I'm. I still don't think it's a, a cash grab. Gen, it's not a genuine one, which is why I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm with you. I don't particularly like it for the reasons that you've highlighted. Mm-hmm. But I'm. I'm not. I'm not against it at the same time. Like I. I still. I still have. I still have, a, an OG Xbox. I'm still running the OG Xbox One, and I'm happy with it. I haven't got an S. I haven't got an X. I'm still playing it. I'm still playing all the games that you guys are playing. I'm still happy playing it. I don't, like I said, you don't have to buy into it. I didn't buy into it. I got a PS4 Pro, but that's because when I went to buy a PlayStation, there was a choice between the two. And I went, well, for the extra 
however much it was and it was negligible, I went and bought a Pro. Well, you, you, you weren't upgrading. You didn't have one at that point. That's right. Exactly. Look, I'm, I'm going to say I'm okay with it, but I wouldn't advocate it if that's, that's probably the best way of putting it. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence here, mm. unfortunately, which is why I didn't vote. <laughs> you could have been the 300th vote. There was 299 votes. <laughs> I, I, I abstain for political reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, more politics. God damn. Oh. Uh, Rem, what, what's your stance? I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with anything you guys are saying at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I I can see the value in a, a mid-cycle, I guess. But, yeah, it is really just making life a bit easier for a dev and giving a bit of that nuance and newity to a, a system that's already in progress to the consumer. Yeah, it improves your experience a little bit, but yeah. as you said, you know, it, it, making the developer work with the graphics that they have and um, coming up with that best result really does end up being the best option, I think. But at the same time, if you have a console in rotation for a very, very long time, then they are rather stretched and rather limited with what they can do. So I guess in that sense, I sort of look at it and go, well, you know, it's nice to be able to provide that and see where they can go with that extra boost. Mm. So, yeah, on the fence, really. Yeah, and, uh, and another, just another quick point. I always think that this, I always go said in the- back to the same thing. If Naughty Dog and Rockstar can do it, why can't anybody else? Yeah, pretty much. Because they're always um, pumping out games that are beyond the, the capabilities of what we think we've got. Yep. Mm, and yeah. updating, as 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 has been said in the chat, GTA Five. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the last. That was a last yeah. gen game. Yeah, and, and it's come still across to, to current gen, and uh, and, and it's still pumping out yeah. amazing, uh, yeah, results. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Look, before um, we forget, I need to I need to do this specifically just because I know Snoogs hates it. <laughs> we all agreed on that on on uh, yeah, we all agreed. Does yep. that mean we have to play it three times? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, Snoogs. <laughs> no, you're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, there you go. That is uh, the poll of the week, and um, a lot of people had their say. I've got comment of the week. Uh, it came from John Kia, and he said, I think it's good if you like prison sex as it's akin to being bent over and taken for a ride. I voted <laughs> no, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, wow. That's some strong opinion right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure he thinks it's a money grab. But anyway, eat to each their own. I've got a. I'll kick off um, talking about a, a Nintendo Switch game that I played this week. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I got an email from the, um, the the PR company behind a game called Behind the Screen. And this is a game that's available on the Nintendo Switch. And I had no idea what it was, but they didn't even like contact us and ask us or anything. They just sent us a code and said, "Here, play this. If you want to review it, review it. If not, all good." I said, "Okay." And I replied back saying, "Look, I'll give it a go, and I'll mention it on our podcast." And I've got to say, this game gives me nightmares. <laughs> okay. Um, the only, For what reason? The only problem is, it's not a horror game. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear but it is the creepiest thing I have ever seen that sort of is just a puzzle game but it's so bizarre the art style and what you do in the puzzles it's like ah, oh, I think I just I'm, I don't think I'm the core audience for this game now it's, essentially it's like a slide puzzle uh, there's all different types of puzzle, mind you, but the predominant ones that I've played so far are slide puzzles where you've got to you've got to get. For example, there's a there's a section where there's a whole bunch of beds. There are children sleeping on mattresses on a massive floor, like it looks like a I don't know, like an auditorium, and they're all on mattresses on the floor. Uh, what? 
and you've got to slide the mattresses out of the way so you can move other mattresses. You can only slide them forward and back. Uh, and the really big mattresses, mattresses I guess they're the, the fat kids that hogged all the food, you can only push You can only push them. You can't pull them because they're too heavy to pull. And you've got to move them out of the way to make a like a, a path so you can get another thing through. And it's a puzzle game in that respect. And then there's, there's sections where... There's uh, teachers, because I think you might be in a school. It's, it's so weird. And uh, there's teachers in the hallway, and they've got like a cone of vision, and they can hear your footsteps. When you move, you've got like, a, you know, when there's like a circle pings off you, and that's how far your sound is going. Mm. Yeah, and you've got to sneak through the hallways to get to the other side, and you don't want to get caught by the teacher, otherwise you have to restart. Then there's these weird bunny rabbit things that will giggle and laugh and talk to you and beg for you to help them. And they're like, don't leave us. What's this game called again? Behind the... Behind the screen. Yeah, look it up. Then there's there's like like a boss fight where you're being chased by this like grotesque looking spider monster with a human head and it's chasing you down the hall and it's basically like uh, the old school... Battle toads, where you had to, you're, you're avoiding obstacles, so you're just pushing left and right, and you've got this monster chasing you. And then you get to the end, and it, it was just a teacher that was chasing you because you were escaping school or whatever. It is so bizarre. The puzzles are actually not bad, so it's not a bad game, but it's just so weird. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 the the character you play as is like it, you look like one of those porcelain dolls with the the red circles, so the rosy red cheeks and you know chubby face and all that sort of stuff. It's just oh, I don't. Um, I'm just gonna. You know, there's a um. This is a this is also an iOS game. You can get this on oh, your iPhone. Oh, well, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the video on that, and yeah, you're right. This is. Visions of nightmarish proportions. This yeah. is, it looks like it's set in like North Korea. Yes, yes. <laughs> like it, it's yeah. No, it's creepy. I can see why you you're not doing so well. Yeah, good. I'm 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 glad. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, no. There is there. This is truly. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I mean, look, thank you very much to, to the guys for sending it across to me, but um, I will be sending you my psychologist bill. <laughs> how, how, is it free on iOS, do you know? No, no it's, 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 it's five bucks. Five bucks, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how much it was on the Switch because I used a code to get it, but, uh, yeah, super bizarre game. I, I, look, I don't, I wouldn't say it's rubbish, uh, it's actually not a bad game, but geez, it's weird. Weird is how I'd describe it. Behind the screen, check it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching on YouTube now, and yeah, it's serious, seriously crazy. Well, yeah. There you go. Oh, all right, enough of that. <laughs> yes. What about you guys? So I have been playing Ghost Recon actually this week. Oh, uh, yes. Gone back to it. Uh, season six has started. Just clarify. I know it's obvious, but we'll just clarify. Yeah. Wildlands, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Wildlands. My my apologies. Season six has started. With that, they've changed up the challenges. The challenges are now weekly, as opposed to monthly. And there's an overarching price system that goes with doing all the challenges now. So the usual method of complete each challenge, get a prize, uh, like a small prize for each. And then when you finish the solo challenges, you get a, a main prize. And then the task force challenge, you get a main prize for that. There's also one that's like a series of monthly prizes. So this month it's a bunch of vehicles. And for every four solo challenges you complete, you get one vehicle and you've got to collect all three throughout the month. You've got to do all 12 challenges to get the, the three cars, the okay. three vehicles. Sorry. that That's good. I'm enjoying doing those challenges. The challenges are pretty much what I play the game for now, and I've been enjoying those. But I also finally, Snoog's 
quite a while ago gave me the season pass for the game and I finally grabbed that and put it down and uh, I started playing Knockout Road Mm -hmm. which I hadn't played up until now and found that is a completely different animal to the normal campaign yeah it is yeah it's it's almost like they just went screw the whole technical thing let's just throw GTA in this and (laughs) <laughs> turn it into like jumping cars and doing stunts in helicopters and yeah doing drifting challenges i'm like what has this got to do with fighting bolivian drug dealers <laughs> but hey whatever give me a monster truck with nitrous and i'll jump it yeah but hey all for america you know <laughs> America. So, look I, I haven't played it for very long i've probably played it maybe like 20 20 minutes half an hour so it, it's a very superficial opinion of it at this place at this moment. I'll play it a lot more and I'll see where it goes because at the moment it feels like uh, Wildlands meets the crew. That's that's where I'm at with it at the moment. So yeah, cool. Well, that's good to see you you're still going on with that game. I mean, getting your money's worth. That's pretty cool. Definitely. No, I, I'm still really enjoying it. And funnily enough, it's, yeah, it's really good. So if anyone's out there and wants to play with me. Well, I mean, so I'm still playing it. So. Pretty good. Snoogs yeah. and I uh, played Rainbow Six Siege last weekend, or it went went round to his place, and and I took my Xbox One S in the what's it called? I don't know the little you know that game thing that the, I it's yeah, called the games. case with the screen. Yeah, that thing where you can put your Xbox in it and plug it in. So I took that round. That's it's the first time I've ever actually used it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was really cool. It felt old school again, like when when I was younger, mm-hmm. and, I, and we would go to our friend's house, and we would take our consoles with us, or take the computer yep. with us, and we'd play together in the same room. It was really cool. It was a good night. Um, I sucked at Rainbow Six Siege. I had a couple of wins, but uh, <laughs> it didn't matter because we were, we were enjoying it. It was good fun. It's mm. just that disconnect that you don't have very often anymore because we. Obviously, we have busy lives and families that we're home with, and we, so we majority of the time we're playing online. Mm. And uh, that that's something that I enjoy because it's it's a rare yeah. a rare thing to have the time yep. to do that. And it was a good night. Yeah, so that, that was really cool. Uh, we also played a couple of games of Fortnite, and I got my ass handed to me again. I've I've become so busy lately that I I haven't been playing games much and i'm getting really bad at them i was bad most of the time when i was when i was practicing <laughs> now i am so terrible oh dear but uh yeah that was that was a good night what about you rem what have you what have you got what have you been playing oh uh, well yeah speaking of not playing games um <laughs> mostly ios stuff for me mm-hmm. so i've tried a few more so you know the game that you've been raving about, Hole, I.O. Oh, yeah, yep. Same people have made one called Bumper. So instead of trying to swallow up the landscape with the hole, you're uh, trying to bump other people off an island. And as you do, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. Same idea as the hole as you get bigger. Yeah. But it's actually, I think, a lot more challenging in that. Yeah, good good summation, Kazakyle. <laughs> it's like sumo wrestling in bumper cars. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at the screenshots now. It looks cool. Yeah, that one's good. Also, if you hit someone from behind, you can actually get like a, a heavier hit on them and push them further. So it's, it's really cool. Oh, do you grow bigger when you drop them off the edge? Yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, I'm getting into that. There's also <laughs> like little power-ups that pop up every now and then. You can pick them up and they get you. They grow you bigger as well. Nice. The ratings and reviews on iOS is 4.5 out of 5. And here's the first uh, review it's got. This is the best concept for a game I have seen. I have been waiting for a game like this for a while. And to see it blow up like this is amazing. You go on. It goes on. But, uh, yeah, people are liking it. And it looks good. I'm going to try it. Thanks for that. Excellent. No worries. The other one that I've spent a lot of time doing is Hungry Shark. Mm. Um, so with all the shark movies that have been coming out lately, this one's got a bit of a feature about uh, Meg. But basically the premise of the game is that you are a shark. You've got to eat all the fish that you can and even people. 
but there's also bigger fish than you, bigger sharks, um, other underwater life that can threaten you. So you've got to gain what you can and, and avoid getting hurt. Um, as you rank up, you can unlock bigger sharks, which can obviously take on bigger uh, animals um, and give you bigger bonuses. It's actually got, quite a lot of fun. I've got a couple here. Rem, can you help me out? It's Hungry Shark Evolution or Hungry Shark World. They've got the same icons, almost. There's the Meg and Hungry Shark Evolution and the Meg and Hungry Shark World. Uh, the Meg Edition, so Hungry Shark Evolution. Yeah, both of them in the Meg Edition. I'll just get them both. <laughs> they're, they're free anyway, I guess. Yeah, they're both good. I mean, I've, I've been playing World, but yeah, mm -hmm. I reckon they're both worth a try. I mean, it's pretty awesome when you can, you know, gobble down all these. Like you can, not only eating the, the fish under the water, but like I said, you can eat swimmers if you need to because you constantly, your health is going down, so you've got to keep up your food source. Um, you could also jump out of the water and take on birds and all sorts of different things. Um, you can get some epic jumps going. And I believe once you're big enough, you can even like take on tournaments and challenges against other people and um, take down helicopters. So, you know, who doesn't want to do that? That's cool. <laughs> hey, I just found one. I, when I searched for that one, I just mm. scrolled down and found one called Space Frontier. That looks kind of cool. It, it looks like you've got to do some sort of rocket launch. And you've got mm -hmm. to set the rockets to go off at certain times. I haven't played it. Obviously, I just found it then, but I'm going to play that later. Sounds good. Nice. Anything <laughs> else? Probably the only other one I've been playing is Merge Plane. This is a game that I'm not sure if I should recommend or not. I have spent, nay, wasted a lot of time playing this app, <laughs> but it isn't rewarding <laughs> at all. It's, 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 it's an idle game. So it's, it's designed absolutely. to sort of play, play by itself, and you your interference in it just levels it up more. Oh, is Even, it like that egg game? Yeah. Which it's there's there's a couple of games that uh, like it, but um, no, I, I know what you're thinking of. No, it's not like that. Oh. Uh, so games that I've played that are like it is uh, like. The laser game where you set up a bunch of lasers and it just continually feed stuff in and you pretty much just level up your lasers to cut more with more power quicker and so you're literally just dicing up everything that goes through it. Or um what's the other one? Hang on, let me look. It'll be sitting here on my phone somewhere. Cousin Kyle has been playing merge planes apparently. And he suggested ball crusher. Oh I've seen Yeah, yeah, ball crusher is similar ball to crusher? slice up, but I've been playing. Yeah. I've only got yep. Ball Smasher. Same premise, I think. Oh, Bomber. That's the other one I've got, where you, you constantly bomb a planet until it destroys and then brings up another planet. But essentially, <laughs> you just, you're just just levelling up all, all your bomb, your Earth-destroying capabilities. And What's that one called? Yeah. Uh, Bomber. Bomber, mm -hmm. yeah. I tried that one too. That kind of reminds me of an old DOS game I used to play. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree, Kaza. It's It's... The damn idle games. I'm um, not sure if they're good or not, but they definitely hook you in. <laughs> oh, I've been playing this game all week and I can't put it down. And I'm like, why can't I put this game down? <laughs> it's just not doing anything for me. So you know how you, like, you watch uh, an ad and it'll give you a set amount of time. It'll give you a perk or a bonus or a, it'll multiply your gains or something like that. This one gives you minimal amount of reward for your effort, honestly. You've got to watch about 15 videos to get like half an hour's worth of bonus, <laughs> if that. So it's pretty pretty demanding as far as an idle game goes. Um, but still, I've been playing it all week, so. I'll give it a go. <laughs> hey, I've got some news. Okay. Now, I got this news from Yahoo Entertainment, but I found out about it from Uncle Chunt. Uh, I subscribed to Uncle Chunt's YouTube channel and he pops up with his videos and he talked about this and I thought, wow, I haven't heard about this, but it's apparently a leak. Have you heard of the Xbox All Access? I've heard about it, but not much. Okay. No. Now, now, this is from Yahoo Entertainment. Yeah, right. Who knew Yahoo <laughs> still had anything? Um, 
<laughs> but I, I googled. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I googled all access news, and uh, and Yahoo was the first uh, top hit. Uh, it's probably because I'm using Microsoft Edge. Mm. Uh, Microsoft will soon unveil an Xbox All Access subscription plan that will give gamers an easy way to experience all that the Xbox One has to offer without spending a fortune up front. Windows Central reports that Microsoft will bundle their Xbox One X or S console with Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass for a monthly fee. The Xbox One X plan... This, this is US, I would imagine, will cost $35 a month over 24 months, while the Xbox One S will be about $22 a month. $35 a month? Yeah, so $35 a month US will get you an X and Live and Game Pass. And, you, and if you... It's kind of like a mobile phone plan. And after 24 months, you own the console and you may cancel the subscription or continue it if you wish I'd like to think ah. that the price would go down after two years because you'd paid off the console well, yeah I mean yes <laughs> otherwise yeah. you're paying way too much <laughs> yeah absolutely but yeah look um, I'm hoping look me personally I, I don't know what I'd be like in the future but me personally I'd like to buy my console ah. and I really do hope that they do uh, the all access without the console so you can get uh, maybe a cheaper plan to get gold and game pass together that would be really nice yeah mm. but uh what do you guys reckon about this uh this thing i'm just i'm just doing the math hang on i'm just yeah see i was going to do the math beforehand but i decided not to because this is all us and it's just going to be <sighs> confusing yeah look <clears throat> So what's what's the conversion rate on that? About one point three, so total one point three, roughly. All right. So then we take away two years of my life. Um, gold. <laughs> take away two years of Game Pass. That leaves you with about six hundred and eighty bucks for an Xbox One X. That's US. So that's. Did you? Or, no, no, that, that, no. That's you, once I've. That's that's a very rough conversion into Australian dollars. Oh, so, so that's so that's minus, good. So yeah, minus the two years of gold, minus the two years of Game Pass. What else are we paying for, and what else would you be getting that you would normally pay for? And that is it. Just those two things in an Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Well, then six hundred and eighty-two bucks for an Xbox One X. But that's that's a that's, that's a really, good deal to pay it off. That's, it's 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 a little bit more, but yeah, you're paying it off over a 24 month period instead of uploading. Or cut. I mean, if you don't want to spend the money up front, yeah, because so an Xbox One X is six fifty Australian. Yeah, that's 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 not terrible. To be fair, that's no, that's pretty it's, good. Yeah, it's a bit cheaper than that cost. Not mm. not by heaps though. No. Yeah, but I think I think their main gain will be just people getting into the market and and oh, you know, yeah. obviously buying yeah. their games and all that sort of stuff. So I think have, I think have it's a really the good top game. of our line console with every game you could possibly want to play yeah. for thirty five bucks. Okay. Yeah. Where do it, I sign? It's it's, yeah. it's definitely <laughs> a really cool thing. So it's apparently yeah. hasn't been announced. It's been leaked, so to speak. Yep. Um so whether or not it's true, I I, I think it probably is. But We'll wait to be, you know, before we start singing and dancing, we'll wait for Microsoft to announce it. And this kind of thing, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be US only for a while. Yeah, most probably. And that's another thing as well. Like, I think, I don't know if maybe the Microsoft store will have people sign up, but it might even be just a sign up on the internet and I'll send it out to you. Because, I mean, there's, yeah. There's not there's not a lot of Microsoft stores around. There's only one I know of. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, that's interesting news. Mm. Uh, another little piece of news, and this one's about the Psycho Mantis figurine. Did you did you see that one? No. You 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 guys Metal Gear Solid fans? Hmm. Well, there's a there's a Psycho Mantis figurine, which is Psycho Mantis from the original PS One yep. Metal Gear Solid. This news I got was from Game Inform informer get this there is um oh, first four is the name of the company that makes these figures 
They've announced a pre-order available now for Psycho Mantis statues from Metal Gear Solid. It's a pretty awesome looking statue and it comes with two main configurations. There's like a regular version where it's, it's him sort of floating and there's also a optic camouflage version which is essentially like a like a see-through resin version so he looks clear. Mm-hmm. And each of them include a masked version and an unmasked interchangeable head, which is really cool. But, oh my god, the price! <laughs> oh, I see these things. I see them at the at expos all the time, and you see them in like Bing and EB Games and all that sort of stuff. These statues, and then you look at the price, and you're like, oh, these things are going to be five hundred and twenty four dollars ninety nine US. Jeez. Yeah, the the bloody beautiful looking statues, but god damn, that's super expensive. If I was rich, I would own all these things. I'm not, so I can't have them. <laughs> uh, if you, if anybody listening to this podcast, you're rich. For more information, you can check out the link to First Four Figures uh, to their website. Anyway, it's in the podcast description. So, uh, are you guys going to get one of them? Um, that is definitely on my list of things I probably won't get. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's more expensive uh, than an Xbox look, One X. I've seen a lot of things, like figurines and stuff, for, like, similar money, that I would probably part with my money much sooner than I would for that. Mm. And even then, they're not... Like, it could be my most favorite thing in the world, and I probably still wouldn't spend $500 on a figurine of it, let's put it that way. Yeah. Hey, um, on Metal Gear Solid, I actually have a Metal Gear Solid, the original, special edition with the t-shirt that hasn't been worn, posters that have never been put up, postcards that have never been touched, dog tags, soundtrack, memory card stickers for the original PlayStation 1, and <laughs> the game. And the game is Sealed. Wow. How much was that brand new? 60 bucks. It's probably still 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean the, what it's worth? Yeah, yeah. No way. What, 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 is, it, what is it worth now? No, it's I'm, sure wor- you've, I'm sure you've looked. I have, yeah. It's worth in the vicinity of 500 Wow. So you ah. can sell that and get your psycho man. Yeah, if anyone wants to trade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear, but no, no, yeah, it's it's worth a pretty penny. I've I've had yeah. a few people approach me because I've got some unboxing videos on YouTube for it, mm-hmm. and I've had people approach me asking to buy it, and I've knocked them back. I don't, it's worth more to me than five hundred dollars at the moment. Hey, if I'm ever struggling and need to uh, pay bills, maybe. All right, you guys got anything else? I know, I know that we're gonna probably do something next week around GamesCon once we've had time to but I have watched a bit of bit of stuff mm-hmm. so do you want me to sort of tease out some of the stuff that we might be talking about next week or... yeah sure sure alright Cyberpunk 2077 yeah so there was a 45 minute trailer that what? was behind yep 45 minutes worth of trailer and probably discussion around said trailer yeah behind closed doors so i had to i had to watch some ign stuff and to get all the little bits and pieces out of it but this is what i've gleaned that would have been the same as what kotaku were doing probably Mm. yes most probably Uh, (laughs) no i've I've stated my sources and these are in my own words no 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 not Uh, you i'm just saying ign's uh content was plagiarized no doubt (laughs) <laughs> sure. Uh, so you will be playing as the character V. That is the name of your character. However, V, because it's such an ambiguous name, is because you will have a completely customizable character. You, you know, you'll be able to do lots of cool and funky stuff to make your character you, or what you wish you were you, or what you don't wish you were you. Whatever you, mm-hmm. V. Uh, they hinted towards the romance options in this game, and as promised, it has the full gamut of LGBTQ plus straight, 
binary blah blah options. Did you say binary? Yeah, binary, non-binary, whatever. What the hell is fucking binary and not binary? This is not a discussion for this for this podcast or the amount of time it will take. How about we? I, I, we can talk about that afterwards. Well, I don't really want to talk about it, but I'm just confused. What the hell is that? It's all Ke- good. Kazakai Keza- anyway. will tell me in the chat. He will. He, he and I'm sure he'll use the the sensitivity and tact required for that conversation. <laughs> um, there will be a skill tree. <laughs> Six, six, six main stats. Yeah. Um, of those will include intelligence, strength, um, uh, some others, and one of them is called cool. Cool. Oh, there's yes. a cool stat. There's a cool stat. You have a street cred stat, which, as a mechanic, will allow you. Will this is how they're kind of um, limiting the open world map to you? Is that you will, as you get more street cred, more of the map will open up to you and allow you to explore those places because you'll be cool enough to be there. Oh, does that, will it be visualized by wearing a cap with the brim facing forwards and the cooler you get, it starts to slide around your head and then when you're just <laughs> blowing it off the charts, it's just, it's at the back. Yes. <laughs> Totally. That's ex- <laughs> How did you know? You watched this trailer, obviously. Yeah. Oh, no, I just copied IGN. Yeah. So, uh, for those that don't know, this will be a first-person shooter that is an RPG. So, it's an FPS RPG. Uh, there's also vehicle combat, and that is about the majority of what I've cleaned out of it. So, But that's a lot more than what we knew before. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm very interested in this game. It, yeah, uh, so they're, they're talking about the fact that it will it, it will have a very bespoke core story for your character, and it will have a lot of ambient external sort of stories to flesh out. I'm, I'm going to say, think of think of Witcher, the Witcher's another project CD Red thing. Um, or Fallout kind of feel to it. Yeah, it's it's The Witcher sci-fi first-person yep. shooter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I, I liked I liked The Witcher, but I just don't. I'm I'm not a big fan of that that genre, Era, that setting. Yeah. Yeah. The setting. I'm I'm yep. a very sci-fi oriented person, so I think this game would uh, would really be up my alley. And I get to choose my gender too, because yes, yeah, because. In computer games, you're non-binary. Um, <laughs> All right. Anyway, Fallout 76, it got a, uh, a new trailer. Okay. There was another PSA-style trailer um, that was about the camp system, so your base-building mechanic. Oh, you're not talking about gays again? No, no, no. Camp as in the, the... I can't remember what it stands for, but... It's your, your base building mechanic anyway. Right. Also, they used it as the opportunity to um, announce there will be a uh, a bundle with Xbox One with a themed Xbox for Fallout 76. I haven't seen what it looks like yet, so I can't really. And the pictures that I've seen have been pretty ambiguous. It just looks like a black Xbox to me. However, we'll soon see. For Honor is getting an arcade mode. So think of Street Fighter, uh, what? Mortal oh. Kombat. So essentially what you'll do is you'll go into an arena and you'll have a, what they're calling a quest and you'll go through and fight individual challenges. So it, it may not necessarily be a one-on-one style thing. It might be a three-on-one style thing, but you'll get progressively harder with each AI that comes at you. You'll be able to play this as a single player or a co-op style so you can play with someone else. The two of you, there's going to be up to 30 different modifiers for each specific game. There'll there'll be a bunch of modifiers to change up how the game is played so it keeps it refreshing and you're not always just playing the same characters over and over again kind of thing as enemies. Hmm. So there's that. 
Snoogs played uh, For Honor last week when I was at his place. He goes, oh, do you want to play For Honor? And I said, uh, no, not really. And he's like, oh, <laughs> is it that bad? And I said, go on, play it. Go on, give it a go. So I sat there just watching as he played it. He got about a quarter of the way through the tutorial and went, oh, wow, that impressed me so much. He then pressed the home button, went into my games and apps, and then pressed the whatever that button wow. is. Uninstall? Uninstall. <laughs> wow, he couldn't get through the tutorial. Yeah, it's not that he couldn't, but oh, he didn't want just to. Just wasn't. Didn't want to. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, See, I love that game. That game had, I, I really liked it. It's just that I realized while I was playing the beta, because I played both betas, I just got through the beta and I went, I've now realized how much time and effort I'm going to have to sink into this game to be competitive. Mm. And that is a commitment I am not willing to make. <laughs> Look, I appreciate the game because I can yeah. see why it is well made. Yes. But I'm at a point in my life where I know it's not for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. It Look, I said this, and, and that, was, that was the other thing I said about this when I was playing in the beta. I went, this is not a game for tourists. This is not a game you no. just pick up and you play off off cuff just to, just to try it and go, ah, oh, I'm just going to play this casually. You can't play this game casually. Nope. But in it for the long haul, like I said, you have to play it. You'll have to play it every day. It's... It's a PvP murdering game. Yeah, you... see, this is um this is why I was curious about the arcade version. Is you know, do you think that that's still the way with the arcade style, or do you think arcades making it more accessible? I think arcades making it more accessible. Mm. You, you're you're now playing against a bunch of bots instead of a bunch of other people. It's adding to the campaign for those yeah. who ordered to play a single player campaign. Now, once you've finished that, you're back to playing against other people. And like I said, the difficulty curve for this game is quite extreme. So the ones that play it all the time are murdering the people that play it casually. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think this is allowing newbies to, uh, to level up a lot more easily then? Um, I don't know whether it's actually helping your progression through the rest of the game. It's helping you progress through this part of the game. It mm-hmm. seems like all from what I've what I've seen is you're playing this version to be better at this version kind of right. thing. Okay, so, so standalone. You'll, you'll start off on like a basic quest, and you'll you'll play that a couple of times. You've got enough gear to move up to the next level, and then the next level you get the heroic, and then you get to extreme or insane mm-hmm. or whatever the, the levels are, and you're just trying to work your way through that progression system. I'm not sure whether it actually then translates back into the other parts of the game. I don't think it does. Um, look, there's lots more, but I don't want to. I don't want to spoil everything. There's, uh, there's. Oh, before I, I will finish with this, um, Battlefield Five has an open beta starting on September four with early access for Origin access and pre-order people, and then September six for everyone. So, oh, okay, there's uh, going to be a, an open one. That's good. Yeah. So. That should be fun. Other than that, there's some other games I'll just mention that I saw, but there would be a whole lot more. Uh, I saw some Devil May Cry 5 gameplay, and I saw a new game called Man of Medan, which is going to be is from the people that created Until Dawn. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, they're bringing out what is called the Dark Picture Anthology. So they're bringing out an anthology of horror games, and this is the first of that. So we this can talk is- about that next week. It looks amazing. Yeah, it really does. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to keep yeah. an eye out for it. What's it called? Uh, the Man of Medin. I'll forget that. It's from the yeah. Dark Pictures anthology. Just yeah. look that up. <laughs> I'll Google it when I'm ed- doing the editing. <laughs> That's what I often yep, do. Yep. <laughs> what was yeah. that? <laughs> All right, nice. Uh, so, Rem, yeah, anything? Yeah. So PlayStation have been talking recently that they've got a 360-degree vision of combat zone for their Firewall Zero Hour game. So that's for PlayStation VR, um, that's on August 29th. Now, that might be 29th US, but that, that's something to look at. If you've got a PlayStation VR, definitely worth having a look at. If anyone is still sitting on the fence about Overwatch and hasn't played it yet, 
why. Also, they <laughs> have been having a uh, try for free this week and it's going to keep going until the 29th. So by the time the podcast comes out, you've only got a day. But if you're listening live and you're interested, yeah, you've got a few days to, to try Overwatch if you haven't already. No, by the time the podcast comes out, you've got three days if it's going to the 29th. Well, there you go. It's a because Friday. we're recording on a Friday. It's Friday, yeah. <laughs> we're recording on a Friday. Normally, yeah, we wouldn't, uh, yeah. wouldn't be well, so I don't late. know what day of the week it is, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Starbury Studios has announced that um, Overkill's The Walking Dead is going to be delayed until February on consoles. So this is getting released in November on PC, but for consoles, we've been delayed till February next year. Oh, I'll get it on PC. I want to play that. That looks cool. But that the War uh, Z, the War Z, something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty good. PUBG's full product release is coming on September fourth. So they've had a, a video recently through the Xbox showing the Cell team finishing up development on that, and it's looking pretty good. So, yep, yeah, PUBG fans, keep an eye out for that one. And the last one was that uh, Xbox Game Pass on September 1st is going to get the, the Halo Master Chief collection. Oh, so wow. So if, if you want to go back and play them all, make sure you keep an eye out on Game Pass next month. Yeah. Nice. Just, just while we're on it, I, I forgot because I mentioned this before we started the podcast and I forgot and hadn't mentioned it here. Speaking of Game Pass, uh, they're releasing a Game Pass app for mobile phones. At the moment, it's still in beta, uh, but it will be coming and it will allow you to uh, manage your Game Pass, your games, uh, download your games from your phone onto your Xbox. How that all works, I will find out because I've signed up for the beta and hopefully I get in and I'll be able to tell you a bit more once I've tried it out. Why they can't put that into the Xbox app? I don't know. Yeah. That seems weird, yeah. I, Yeah, anyway. I guess time will tell. All right, uh, so is that it? That's it? That's it for video game discussion? Yeah, I think we're yeah. done. Yeah. All right then, well, let's move on to gaming pre-order. All right, uh, it's been a while. You're going to have to refresh my memory. What's gaming pre-order again? What do we do? So Gaming Pre-Order, formerly called Gaming Disorder, is where I present you with basically a number of answers and you've got to put them in the right order. So <sighs> sequential order. So usually we're doing, like we will be this week, uh, release dates. So I want to know from oldest to newest. Um, yeah, the, I remember this game. This is the game that I'm notoriously bad at. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. we got to keep going till you get good. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, can you do the same one? Like, do do this same same one again next week. Same yeah. one over and over. See if you remember. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's just that's a different game. That's called memory. Yeah. <laughs> well, what what is learning other than remembering things? This is true. <laughs> it's muscle memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there is different types of memory. All right. Well, I'm ready. All right. So this week's theme is uh, release dates. We're going by developers, so I'm going to, I've got five batches of this, and there's only four answers for each one, so it shouldn't be too complex. First one we're going to go for is Bethesda, so these are all Bethesda titles. Okay. You ready? We go. have The Terminator, Elder Scrolls Arena, Zero Critical, and Magic and Mayhem. Which one came first to which one came last? Okay, so I need to put it in order of oldest to newest. Yes. Old to new. Oh, man. I've never heard of Elder Scrolls Arena. I've never heard of Zero Critical. I've never heard of Magic and Mayhem. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I I've, thought you at least heard of Magic and Mayhem. <laughs> no? I've heard of it, but I can tell you. I haven't played any of them. Was, so the, Terminator, was the, Terminator. the Terminator a first-person shooter? Mm, no. This is old DOS. No. Yeah, I played the Terminator yeah. game, that original one. So I'm going to say that's oldest. Then I'll go with... Why are you telling me this? Oh. <laughs> <I'll> t- <laughs> you pick whatever you want. If you want to copy me, that's <laughs> you, your funeral, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. 
I'm done, miss. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Let's let's try this. Um, I'm happy to. Go for it. So I put. So this is going from oldest to newest, yeah. Yes. Stop checking. All right. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So critical Terminator, uh, ESR, and Magic and Mayhem. What's the ESR? Yeah, Elder Scrolls Arena. I just I just went ES. <laughs> <laughs> oh right 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 right. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, did I hear it wrong? I thought it was arena. It'd be ESA. <laughs> yes, ESR. Arena. Arena. R for arena. <laughs> uh, I had Terminator, Magic and Mayhem. Zero critical and ESR. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, so I kind of tricked you guys this time. Of course, you did. I gave them to you in order. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, nice, <laughs> sneaky. That's so, right. I got one point for that. <laughs> oh, but then so did I, because I got. Oh. oh no, I got two. Because <laughs> I got nice the Terminator one. right and I got zero critical right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Good work. Ooh, nice. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our next one is Ubisoft. Oh, Kazakal just changed his answer, sneaky bastard. He did. He was right the first time. <laughs> Ubisoft, we have Planet of the Apes, and we're oh. talking first releases here just in case there's any re-released games Planet of the Apes Beyond Good and Evil Ooh, topic appropriate Mist Masterpiece Collection sorry what was that Mist Masterpiece Collection oh Mist is it M-Y-S-T yeah you know Mist yeah and Mike Tyson Boxing <sighs> Dear, I didn't know there was a Planet of the Apes game I'm done <laughs> as am I we need buzzers or something <laughs> I can just make one up if you like. Sure, go for it. <laughs> what was oh. that? Oh, I'm I'll not sure I can repeat my own. I will pay you a monthly <laughs> subscription to never do that again. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Stop paying up. All right. All right. What are okay. your answers? I'll go first. I've got Mike Tyson, Mist, Planet of the Apes, and Beyond Good and Evil. You got have, one out of four. <laughs> Greg? I have Mike Tyson, Planet of the Apes, Beyond Good and Evil, and Mist. You've also got one. <laughs> is Correct it Mike order. Tyson? <laughs> Correct order is Mist Masterpiece, Planet of the Apes, Tyson, Beyond Good and Evil. Mm. So I got Beyond Good and Evil right in the last position there. I got Planet of the Apes. And you yep. got Planet of the Apes. Well, that's a stalemate then. It is. All right, so... Um. <coughs> All right, moving on. Let's go. Bandai Namco. Soul Calibur 4, Nino Kunai. Kuni. Kuni, sure. <laughs> Tekken 6 and Dark Souls. Two, three, and four. I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> Let's do it. Go, Gridge. All right, uh, Nino Cooney, Dark Souls, Soul Calibur, Tekken. Lucas? Soul Calibur 4, Dark Souls, Tekken, Nino Cooney. Ah, not for naught. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Correct order was Tekken 6, Soul Calibur 4, Nino Cooney, and Dark Souls. Well, Dark Souls is newer than New- Nino Cooney. By one year, yep. I know some when of these did, you sort of go, I'm sure did, that was first. When did Dark Souls <laughs> come out? What year was that? 2011. Was it really? Ooh. Oh, man. Time flies. All right, so I got nothing there. <laughs> did we both get nothing or did Greg get? Yeah, no, no, I got both nothing. Both got nothing. I got yeah. nothing. Oh. I was well off. <laughs> that was I, was I was almost in reverse. I was almost in reverse. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Next one. Next is our friends. It does interactive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have Final Fantasy Seven. Yep. Yeah. Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, and Whiplash. 
Ooh, right, okay. Go, brain, go. I'm done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What was that? I don't know. You, you, I think your brain... That was my buzzer. Your brain... <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like it? <laughs> Gold. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, damn. All right, hang on. Give me a sec. Oh, well, that's it. All right, I'm done. It's wrong. All right, let's do it. Final Fantasy VII, Whiplash, Tomb Raider, Deus Ex. Craig? Whiplash, Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy VII, Deus Ex. Ah, oh, so close with yours. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's, there's one that's just close. Is it the one between Deus Ex and Final Fantasy? No. No? What is it? So if you'd had Whiplash at the end... You'd have oh, been right. Damn it. <laughs> so I'm completely wrong anyway. Yeah. So oh. Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy, Do a Sex and Whiplash. No, I couldn't. <laughs> what is. I can't remember what Whiplash is. Whiplash is uh, that creepy looking game with the bunny rabbit. I'll, uh, I'll have to put a picture up. No, so I won. Sorry, Lucas. So did I win that one? No, no. What was the oldest? Tomb Raider. Oh, I had Final Fantasy. Is that a stalemate again? That's a stalemate again. Oh, yep. <laughs> You're technically still winning. Yeah, because I got the first one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, this is the last round, isn't it? This mm. is the last one. Oh, here we go. Uh, we're going to have to open our loot boxes for electronic arts. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's go. Stupid. All right. We have Bard's Tale, Road Rash, Sim City, and Boulder Dash. That's two words. Uh, I'm not sure it being two words helps me, but uh, thanks for that. <laughs> well, it's in Boulder Dash rather than Boulder Dash. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. I'm going to go with that one, then that one, then that one, and then that one. I'm done. If I put more care yeah, and thought okay. into it, I'm likely to do worse. <laughs> All right. <cool. laughs> All right. Give it to me. Uh, so, oh, Gridge. All right, I got Boulder Dash, Road Rash, Sim City, Bard's Tale. Okay, Lucas. I've got Bard's Tale, Boulder Dash, Road Rash, Sim City. Oh, Gridgeo gets two out of four. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? Remember how you said you'd make an uneven amount of games so that you didn't know, you know, have to worry about there being, like, a tie? Yeah, my, my tiebreaker made a tie. We managed to tie. <laughs> oh, and that game does my head in. I'm happy with a, with a tie. <laughs> oh, well played, both of you. <laughs> Very nice. So- no, that's not well played by either of us. We got no. three points out of a potential, t- what, 20... Yeah, 20 points. 20 points. So for those who were wondering, the correct order is Boulder Dash, Bard's Tale, Sim City, and then Road Rash. Oh, now, dear. If you would sit... We should play the game. Make sure none of them are in the right order. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> we have smashed it. <laughs> yes. Yes, you would have. Oh, dear. Probably would, have, next acci- time. would have accidentally got them, got them right. Mm. Probably. Deary me. All right. Well, well done to both of us. We both get a point. <laughs> Hooray. An undeserved point. <laughs> yes. We are, we are both equally as eligible for the Prime Minister of Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> harsh? What are you saying? <laughs> right. All right. Well, that was gaming pre-order. Thanks for that, Rem. That was good fun. <laughs> no worries. Regardless of how terrible we do, let's move on to the next segment, which is What's That Sound? (music) All right, so let's have a listen to last week's What's That Sound, see if you guys um, managed to work out what this one was. Remember that one? Oh, I remember it. I played it way too many times. Yes. Still no well, idea? Oh, I still maintain it's either someone falling, someone dying, or someone falling from dying by falling. Well, look, that, that may or may not be correct, but that's not what the game is. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not describe that sound. 
<laughs> I want to know what is it. You know that that could be a fun new game though. <laughs> well, it could be. It could be. <laughs> Describe that as effects. <laughs> now, this is from the original Grand Theft Auto. It's a scream from getting run over or scared by a car driving past them. Oh mm-hmm. wow! There yeah, you go. GTA One. That was what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Skrill says, no shit. Yes, lots of shit. <laughs> All right, are you ready for this week's What's That Sound? Fire away. Let's right. do it. Have a listen. I know this. Just have to work out what it is. <laughs> oh, my first instinct is to call you a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> is he correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a bastard. <laughs> Why? What? What do you? What are you thinking? Oh, I don't know, but I know I've played this game, cause, and I know I've played it enough to know that's that piece of music. Oh. Mm. It's old though. It's this, definitely old. This is a yeah. game. This is a game that I continuously think I've played, and then I'll like boot it up and I go, I don't think I've ever played this game before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like an old PC game, yeah. Oh uh, God, look, it could be. It's it's like an intro song. I know it's an intro song. Mm. Have another listen. <laughs> Possibly a platformer, something to do with shooting stuff. I was going to say, it sounds like a fighter. My only other instinct would be to go for like one of those old driving games, like the pixelated driving games, but it doesn't sound quite right for that. Look, it's all those are potentials because that was pretty much my early childhood in gaming. <laughs> <laughs> pixelated driving games and pixelated, pixelated fighting games. Side scrolling, fighting, shooting games. <laughs> Everybody in the chat is wrong. Skrill, not Duke Nukem. It's not Prince of Persia. It's not. It's not, it's not any of those. It's not no. Wilfenstein. No. No, it's not. Hacktail. <laughs> See, oh, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> you, you got. You're really pissing me off this week. <laughs> I, I can't get it, and I know as soon as you tell me, I'm going to kick myself. Mm. All right. Well, that's this week's What's That Sound. If you think you know what it is, then send us a message to our Facebook page. And if you are correct, you have a good chance of getting yourself a free game. Uh, Good old reliable Mario coin. (laughs) (laughs) Skrill, you're very close. I'll give you that much. But no, it wasn't the Mario coin this week. (laughs) Inevitably, if he keeps guessing... He will get right one day. It, it may originally, it may eventually be the Mario coin. Although I think, I think we've actually done the Mario coin. We might have done that like in episode one of the Aussie oh. Gamers podcast before the reboot. It, it, it was in episode episode one of gaming uh, reverberation. That's for sure. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was, oh, it too, was yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was either you or Pat had to do it. Okay, well, I, th- I think it was obviously. Pat. I think Pat had to do it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, always yeah. Pick those, I always pick those high-pitched notes. It's high-pitched ones for... <laughs> Pat, because he he's got the deepest voice ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love your evilness. All right, uh, let's move on to the next segment, which is Gredge. Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Okay. Actually, I don't know why I get you to do that, because the actual intro is you saying that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so just, you just love it. Ah, whatever. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, look, it's just all one right. more. <laughs> all right, everybody, get your thinking caps on. I've got three hoodats. And uh, are you ready? Far away. Okay. For those new to the game, it's basically who am I? But with what 
Clint Moore Street Cred. More Street Cred, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Like Countdown, and we play it on the street. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, my first appearance was strangely in the game called Radmobile. It was just a cameo, though. Right, so we hint without being a hint. <laughs> well, if you're me, you would have known this because I know this. This, this is. Ooh, that's another hint. Is it? Oh, hang on, hang on. Is it Luigi? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should do this theory as well and just go. Is it The Last of Us? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm gonna be right eventually. <laughs> Strangely enough, I really like other games other than The Last of Us. You do? No. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it Michael Ironside? Michael Ironside. <laughs> no, but I like you. I, I like how well you guys know me. He's amazing. All right, next next clue. There have been a lot of games that I've starred in since. Mario. No, not Mario. Sticking with my theme. Who that? <laughs> a lot of them haven't been received very well. Yoshi. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry, no, that went no for that one. It should be Wario. Oh, I thought you meant Benjo Kazooie, but you know. <laughs> oh, poor Benjo. Who Who oh, I, know. I have a lot of colourful. I have a lot of colourful friends. Colourful friends. <laughs> <laughs> colourful friends. Donald Trump. <laughs> Thanks, Gaza. No, he no. doesn't have a lot of no, colourful friends. His, <laughs> no. his taste is very monochromatic. And <laughs> very much. Mono, he lives in black and white. <laughs> uh, no, don't know. Don't know. Okay. Who did? My cartoons and comics will lead you to believe that I absolutely love chili dogs. That's a killer hint, that one. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually, my, I'm I'm stopping the thing now instead of just being you. <laughs> See, I can tell that's a killer hint, but it does nothing for me. <laughs> <coughs> no, who that? I, the ne- I didn't know this. The next one's got to be a super killer hint, so it's just going to be first one in. <laughs> oh, these beautiful golden rings have saved my life on so many occasions. Oh, Sonic. Yes! Yay! My nickname is yes. the Blue Blur. Sonic. My friend's yes. name is Tails, and I am Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, Sonic was that a like clue? Chili Dogs. I forgot about that. <laughs> chili Dogs, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about the Chili Dogs. Anyway. All right, let's go to the next one. I have starred in over 20 of my own games. Mario. I beat you, girl. I beat you. (laughs) No, not Mario. Who did? My video game franchise is owned by two companies, one of them being HAL Laboratory. (laughs) Kazakh Carl comes in with Sonic. No. (laughs) (laughs) Just missed it. Sonic again. That would have been funny, though, if I did do Sonic (laughs) twice. Yeah, this is true. It's a night for trolling. <laughs> mm, don't know. Who did? Who did? Uh, I have a bulbous body with stumpy arms. Pac Man? <laughs> Kirby? <laughs> it is Kirby. Oh, yes. well done. And I, I believe that uh, Kaza Kyle got that right first. So there you go. Yeah, he did. Because he said it, he said it like three times. Yeah. So did Skrill. He's like yeah. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. <laughs> yes, nice. that's right. So I live in a dome-shaped house in Dreamland. I have appeared in many iterations of Super Smash Bros. I usually inhale my enemies, and I'm pink in color. I am Kirby. All right, the last one is coming back. Let's go. My video game debut was back in 1987. Who did? Who did? 
This is a big clue early on. My video games aren't really made for children. Doom guy, no. <laughs> Cuba, Street Fighter, GTA, no. Who did? All right, get ready for this one. <clears throat> Some of my game titles include Magna Cum Louder, Love for Sale, Box Office Let's Bust, just... Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals, and Wet <laughs> Dreams Don't Die. <laughs> Let's just do it, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> I consider myself a bit of a gift from God, even though I've got a pot belly and male pattern baldness. <laughs> you might remember my game called Land of the Lounge Lizards. I am Leisure Suit Larry. Yay. Nice. <laughs> well done. Well done, Greg. Well done. Thank you. God, I love that game. That's a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> And I like doing it because I suck at all kinds of games. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's The Last of Us. Well, that's it for... Gretch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Who did it? Let's move into... Good. Line! <laughs> you, line! <laughs> Let's move into <laughs> the last words. Okay, so let's, uh, let's find out who the... F- said that please what is better to be born good or to overcome your evil nature through great effort and that was said by oh, look i don't even know if i can pronounce this correctly but it's parthenax oh okay yep i know that name from elder scrolls 5 skyrim mm-hmm. there you go yeah, so look, I, I had to take my source's word for it because I haven't really played Skyrim properly. But yeah, apparently they said that and Parthenax was who who said those words. That, that's who the f*** said that. <clears throat> Alrighty, so the next poll of the week is going to be can it ruin your experience to watch too much gameplay and reveals of a yet-to-be-released game that you're looking forward to. So it'll either be, yeah, sometimes it can show off too much of the game, maybe a bit of a sp- bit spoilery, or, no, nah, I want to see everything. I want it all, I want it all, I want it all. Hmm. So we will just... I'll be interested to see what this one comes back with. Whoa, I think I bumped my volume again. That got loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we, we will be interesting to see what people think. the The poll is live now, and we'll discuss that and give our our thoughts and opinions on that next week. Greg, yeah, code word, burping, buddy, burping button, burping button. Yep. <laughs> okay, let me write that down. Burping button. I've got to write them down because sometimes they'll put it in the like they'll post it places. And yep. I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. I've got a note. I've got a note here so reminding me what the code word is. All right. Any last words, kids? Um, I did have some. Still was, so uh, kind of been that important. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Hey, uh, I'll, I'll tell a little bit of the story about um, me installing CCTV cameras in my home, own home. Well, it's, I guess it's not video game specifically related, but it's techy, and I like that kind of stuff. I got a price from a surveillance, like a uh, surveillance company that you, you could specifically buy CCTV camera kits from them, and they do it fully installed for you. Can you hazard a guess on how much it was? The price they gave me? No. Are you what you don't want to guess? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I can't guess. I couldn't. I couldn't. Got, have a good two, zero effort. <laughs> have, have a two thousand dollars. Yeah, close. Oh wow. <laughs> two thousand three hundred, I think it was. Yeah, twenty three hundred dollars. And that was the going rate. I I priced it with a couple of them, and that's what they were charging. Four cameras. I think it was two terabyte hard drive, ten eighty p, blah blah blah. Or higher than ten eighty p. It's whatever six megapixels or something. I'm like, what? These these CCTV camera kits are like uh, 500 bucks. Why, why does it cost that much to get it installed? So 
I went and bought one myself and installed it myself. And I did that today. I am extremely sore right now and very tired. Uh, I didn't own a ladder, so I had to buy a ladder. Long story short, I had to buy two ladders. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought one online and it didn't arrive. So I had to go to the shop and buy one. Uh, which meant I had to like interact with people, which wasn't fun. But oh my god, have you guys ever had to install cabling through walls and ceilings and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I have mo- used so many muscles that I didn't even realize my body had that I am so sore right now. Very painful. But you had to get into the roof cavity and all that sort of bizarre when run cables. House is probably going to burn down tomorrow. It's probably done a bad <laughs> job. <laughs> I shouldn't joke about that. No, I, I think I did a good job. And they're all they're all installed now, so I've got cameras everywhere. I've, I had to get them installed because uh, because of Aussie Gamers Express and our rising fame. <laughs> I've got fans coming left, right. No, no, it's bullshit. I did it because I <laughs> I like cameras and security and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> to be fair, they're all facing out of the house. You're just watching your neighbours. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> uh, voyeurism. Yeah, number one pastime for me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that's what I did today, and I'm very, very sore for it. Hmm. So the question is, was it worth the $2,300? <laughs> no, no. It, it Still took, no? No, yeah. it took me five <laughs> hours, and it probably... Look, if I did it again tomorrow, it would probably take me a quarter of the time, but I didn't know what I was doing, so I had to... It was trial and error, so, and there was a couple yeah. of fuck-ups that I had to basically start start from scratch with a couple of things. But um, no, $2,300. No way! The, the camera kit that I bought works really good. It was $250. Mm. And... Nice. And then a whole bunch of, well, I even bought a lat, well, two ladders. I'm still well under budget. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, happy days. You guys, uh, you guys, did you remember what you had, Gretch? No, not a clue. No, don't know. <laughs> no, it's all truly really gone. Uh, fair enough. I've got, I've got a present here that I still haven't given to Snoogs for his birthday. I can't wait to give it to him. But he's away this weekend. This is why he's not doing the podcast with us. He's away for the weekend with the family, and uh, I'll see him next week. And I've got to give him this present. I reckon he will love it. I, I well, I'd hope so. I'd hate for you to buy him a present that you thought he'd hate. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a troll of a friend, but I wouldn't even. Get- there's, there's gag gifts. You could give gag gifts, but you know, sometimes you buy something. You're like, oh, I hope he likes it. Oh, I don't know if he likes, you know, g strings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know right I now. do. I know he has a penchant for those. <laughs> he does like them, does he? Oh yeah, totally. Oh man, he, I... trust me. If you buy him one next time you come around, he'll make sure that's all he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And make you regret ever buying it for him. <laughs> Well, luckily enough, the present that I bought for him is not a G-string. <laughs> but I actually bought it... I bought it months ago. I was like, oh, I've got to get that. I'm buying that. I've got to get it for Snoogs. His birthday's coming up. I'll give it to him then. So I've held on to it for a while. But I still haven't wrapped it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a, like, typical male. You're a dude. Yeah, I'm a dude yeah. when it comes to that. I'll, <laughs> I'll either give it to the wife to, to wrap it for me, or I'll put it in... One of those 50 cent uh, Woolworths bags. And <laughs> <laughs> no, pretend it's a gift that. bag. Just plastic bag. Just, <laughs> just plastic bags, shopping bag. Just wrap it up. There you go, bro. There you so go. As long as receipt's not in there, you're good. <laughs> yeah. I might, I might chuck a, um, a CC and dry in there with it. Yeah. <laughs> then I don't think uh, you To will. be fair, the amount of gifts that have been given out in JB Hi-Fi bags for me are pretty, is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really care what 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 the bag is or the wrapping is. If it's a sick no, gift from an I awesome forget. person, I'll take it. So yeah, happy birthday to Snoogs. Wish you were here, but no doubt he'll be back next week. I got nothing else. What about you guys? Done, done. Yeah, no, I, I think that's good. Uh, but yeah, look forward to next week when we get the really flesh out GameCon. I think that'll be fun. So yeah, nice. I've got a 
got to check out some of that stuff from what you guys told us in the show it seems pretty cool yeah and there's there's lots more lots lots more nice all right let's bring it home thank you very much to everyone that has listened to our show and especially those that are listening this far along and a super special thank you to our live listeners who are chatting away while we record the show as a Cole and Skrill, thanks, thanks guys, you're awesome. To all of our listeners, feel free to continue any of the topics that we have discussed on this show on our Facebook page or Discord channel. Links are in the podcast show notes in description. Thank you very much to Rem and Gredge for your hard work and efforts preparing this show. Not you, Snoogs, because you didn't help us at all, you prick. Nah, I'm just kidding, I love you. <laughs> That's all for me. As always, I am Lucas. I am Ramuta. And I have been Greggio. And nobody is Snoogs. See ya! (laughs) Peace! (laughs) Well, here we are once again at the end of this week's show. If you're still hungry for more video game content, then head over to the Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page and give us a like. We also have a heavy presence over on Twitter and YouTube and their links are waiting for you in the podcast description. This podcast is available for your convenience through Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and more. Thanks again for listening. Catch you all on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. <laughs>